I'm Jamie Heineman. And I'm Adam Savage. We're going to find out what happens when you strap a rocket to a 67 Chevy. Oh, yeah. Coming up, we turn a Chevy into a 350 mile per hour road warrior. This is so exciting. I'm going to have to have a grinectomy. <laughs> Pop rocks and soda, urban myth or recipe for disaster? Dude, your stomach's going to burst. Here on Mythbusters, we're not just going to retell the stories. Small tip. We're going to put them to the test. We're prepared to put our bodies on the line. There's just one problem. <laughs> Some aren't myths at all. Which one would that be? <laughs> I don't know yet. <laughs> so why should you trust these guys? Whoa. Well, Jamie and Adam have over 30 years in model building, animatronics, and toy prototyping. They've worked in features, television, theater, and games. They can build just about anything, and probably have. This is M5, my special effects shop. Come on in and have a look around. Jamie's amassed an awesome collection of tools, talent, and uh, techniques. If we can't find it here... I'm trying to locate a pig's stomach. There's always Adam's eclectic collection. I come from the planet Butthead. Jamie and Adam are supposed to be experts in what's real and what's not. And they'll need every trick in the book. So where do we begin? What do we got? Let's go. This is the big one. Uh, what we have is a 1967 Chevy Impala that was taken out into the desert and somebody had put a, a rocket booster on it. Now they found out about it because there was a smoldering wreckage that the highway patrol there found. We pieced together uh, a gentleman or an individual that had put a JATO or a rocket assist takeoff unit on an older model um, vehicle. The guy apparently was a, an Air Force sergeant, a uh, former Air Force sergeant. He made sure he had a long straight road and there was nothing around. He got up to highway speed, about 80 miles an hour, fired the things off. The car had accelerated from like 80 to 300 miles per hour in a couple seconds. Yeah. There was a curve in the road, a slight uh, increase or upgrade, and a mountain shortly thereafter. So he applies the brakes, and of course the brakes burn out. They found about a mile and a half of skid mark. He didn't make the turn, he went airborne, and he crashed into the side of the mountain approximately 100 or so feet up in the air. So do we have any corroboration of this, or any photos, or uh, anybody come forward? Well, that's our job to pursue that, uh, and uh, we need to get a, get a hold of a 67 Chevy or something close, as close as we can to it, and uh, need to get a hold of a, of a, a Jado or a Rado, uh, or, or again, something equivalent to it. It'll look really cool. It'll look really cool. I mean, that's going to be big flame shooting out the back. It's going to be great. <laughs> I can't think of anything more fun than doing this. <laughs> no, you know what? I really can't. I first heard about the story uh, approximately 1994 when I was, uh, my job was a spokesman for the Department of Public Safety. I received a phone call from a local reporter asking about a Darwin Award uh, that was on the internet. The way the story read was that the Arizona Department of Public Safety or the Highway Patrol was the ones that did the investigation on it. I thought it was a very real possibility that it could have happened because Arizona is home to several air bases, thus a, a military personnel could have gotten a hold of a JATO unit to use in this fashion. JATO, or Jet Assisted Takeoff, has been around since the Second World War. We should call them RATOs because each canister is filled with solid rocket propellant. A single unit puts out 1,000 pounds of thrust for 12 to 15 seconds. Up to eight JATOs are used when large military aircraft are operating with heavy loads or from short runways. Do we think the military is just going to hand over one of these JATO bottles? Uh, what do we do if they don't actually let us have one? Well. 
I kind of doubt that they will. Uh, this is not the kind of thing that you would want to let the general public have access to. Yeah. Air Force Public Affairs. I'm not at my desk right now, so leave a message. We'd love to have the military there and involved. Just so it's clear, we're not trying to uh, get a just get a hold of one of these things and yeah. do whatever we want with it. We yeah. want we want you involved. Okay. Well, we actually got to talk to somebody. She said they're very expensive units, and that uh, you know I don't know whether it's going to be possible. This is an unusual request. <laughs> Most good urban legends have good details, names, places, dates. In this case, often it's uh, a Chevy Impala that the man was driving. So we need to find a 67 Chevy. I wonder where we're going to do that. Well, uh, I picked this up at a flea market, actually. This here is a 67 Chevy Impala. That's our goal. Yeah. Hopefully we'll be able to find a junker, something with a crappy body. All we need is for it to run. Not an Impala, we got a Pontiac. It runs, the Pontiac runs? Uh, not at the moment, it just needs the transmission on. Oh. Yeah. Only? <laughs> yeah, but you know. <laughs> and a car not only is about survival, but it's also a symbol of adolescent freedom. When you get a car, you can leave the nest. We're going to be putting some uh, rockets on the top of the car. And uh, setting Oh, like off. the guy in the desert, the old yeah. urban legend. That's it. So you want exactly. it's a 72 Impala or 69 Impala you're supposed yeah. to be used. Yeah. yeah everybody well, take anything that looks like I mean, a Falcon within a couple of years. Something of that kind of vintage as long as it runs. Keep. Don't care about. Uh, yeah, the you want a Thunderbird? Well, it got, to, it got to be cheap. 62. Well, $750. That's a very plausible. It's also um, a symbol of sex. This is where a young man can have his first uh, sexual experiences in this car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the sh we're done. <laughs> I'd be kind of ashamed to destroy it. We don't have to destroy it. <laughs> oh, that's so beautiful. Oh my god, I'm loving this. Uh, wow. Oh, those automatic windows. Oh, yeah. Is that your premise, though, to do that uh, urban legend? Yeah. Well, you should get a Chevy, because I always heard the story with the Chevy. Chevrolet, the beautiful shape for 1965. The Chevy Impala is an ideal candidate for urban legend status. It was first introduced in 1958. From the start, it was a prestige car within the reach of the average American. A completely new look time cannot wash away. By the end of the millennium, sales exceeded 13 million making the Chevy Impala the most popular full-size car in American history. See the beautiful shapes of Chevrolet for 1965 at your Chevrolet dealers now. We need it to run. We need it to run. Needs this one it. may run. It's got a bomb motor in it. What do you mean? You have rockets on it? It'll go. <laughs> We're going to destroy the car. Of course possible. you are. That's half the fun. <laughs> Thank you anyway. Thanks very much. No problem. Despite its popularity, the Impala is proving as hard to procure as uh, Jado Rocket. We called you last week concerning uh, procuring a Jado. Procuring a Jado or a, a Rado. So far, we've had uh, we've had very little luck with getting anybody uh, to return our calls. All I want is a little cooperation. That's all. I'm Sergeant Bob Stein with the Arizona Department of Public Safety, and you're watching MythBusters. Jamie and Adam are following a promising new lead on that '67 Chevy. Well, we're going to strap some rockets to its back end. Yeah. You know that thing where they took it out in the desert and set those up? I got the perfect car for you. We're going to do that. You got it. It's a 67, all right. But unfortunately, 
and Oldsmobile. This is your car if you want a car to put a rocket on. <laughs> Just as we've given up hope of finding our car in time. It's officially an Impala. Would it be all right if I uh, drive it around the block? Oh, yeah. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I got it, lady. It's a working 66 Chevy Impala with some decidedly <laughs> non-standard features. <laughs> this is without a doubt our car. It's destiny. Well, thank yeah. you very much. Well, really thank appreciate you. it. It's 100 degrees, we're three hours from the shop, and thanks to a blocked fuel filter, our rocket car is doing exactly zero miles per hour. Thank goodness Adam's got the gold breakdown package. So, the Air Force apparently called us back and turned us down on the JATO rocket? Permission denied. Yeah, I think, did they call us back again just to deny permission again without being asked? Twice. So we got these things. Uh, yeah. How are we going to, these are the hobby rockets. This is like an example, one of the tubes. How are we going to fire these off? Well, these are actually more powerful than the JATOs. Uh, the ones that, you know. But the they're ones, smaller. How is that possible? Well, uh, we're going to use more of them. While they're running, they put out 1,500 pounds of thrust as opposed to uh, 1,000 pounds, but they, uh, they only last for four seconds. We're going to get several of them, and we'll set them off successively. So we're going to put three of them on, and, uh, and we'll probably put them on, uh, on the car uh, uh, like this. We have a uh, qualified operator that uh, you have to have a license, to, uh, to a federal license, to be able to purchase these things and operate them. I would hope so. Yeah. And um, so we're going to have those guys uh, set them off. And, uh, uh, so that's what it's going to look like? Yeah. That's, uh, that's essentially what we're going to do. We'll have to reinforce it and everything. That's all fine in theory. But it's an awful lot of power to put on the roof of a junker. One pound of thrust is two horsepower. So the, one of those rocket motors at 1,500 pounds of thrust is 3,000 horsepower. Yeah. That'll make our Chevy almost four times as powerful as an Indy car. Think of putting a, a, another car on top of this car. That kind of it's that kind of weight that's up there. Uh, so we want to probably build some kind of steel cage within the car's body to support this. Yeah, we need to have. We a, don't just want to like tie strap it to the roof or anything. Yeah, that would be a, a bad idea. Could probably rip the roof right off the car. How about that? There. <laughs> Adam, you're going to get sick. I believe I'm already sick. Give me the fire extinguisher. What the? This time, it's no joke. The fire's burning through the hydraulic lines. 
Boom. That sawdust with the hydraulic fluid's a nice little kind of wicky thing. Yeah. <laughs> wicky.